Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Daniel and today I'm going to show you how I went from a 123 in cars to a 127. And 127 is actually not the best car score, but it was my goal score to begin with. Uh, because spoiler alert, I'm not the best reader. I never read as a kid and in high school I would always just end up reading the books that were assigned to us for English class like East of Eden and Grapes of Wrath. Throwback. Um, I remember taking my full length exams from Altius and Next Step and doing you know fairly well on the science sections and then totally bombing the cars section. Uh, you know there were many instances during my practice where I would be reading the cars passage all the way through and then end up asking myself what in the world did I just read and then proceed on to bomb the entire question set. Anyways, I did manage to persevere as you can see by my car score going from a 123 to a 127. And I'm really sure you can too, because if I can do it, which is someone who didn't read a book as a kid and um, totally bomb his reading comprehension uh, section in SAT and ACT. Um, so overall, I'm sure that you can get a super high car score too. All right, the first thing you should do when you're starting to study for the MCAT section is to actually start worrying about cars. And for someone starting out in cars, I actually really recommend doing at least one practice passage a day. Uh, missing two or three days, even for cars, can really get you to lose um, this certain type of logic and critical thinking that comes with the cars section and through cars practice. Uh, I know for me personally, while I was trying to study for the MCAT last summer, I took like a week off from doing cars practice. And when I went back, I started getting one out of sixes and two out of sixes instead of getting my regular five out of sixes and four out of sixes. And so the point of that story is that make sure you're doing cars practice passages at least once a day because if you don't, you're gonna lose momentum and um, you don't want that to happen. And even more important is to do these practice passages under test taking conditions. And what I mean by that is try to simulate what you might expect on test day to the best of your ability. And that means taking these passages under time conditions, not listening to music while you're doing the actual passages and just trying to simulate, you know, what the environment might look like at your real testing center. Maybe the lighting, maybe the clothes you're gonna wear because the more you simulate what a real testing taking, uh, real testing taking conditions might look like, the less anxious you're gonna be when you actually take the real cars exam on test day. Tip number two I have is um, testing solution for cars. And this is not an advertisement for testing solutions, but I do want to say that the guide they have on SDN, which is Student Doctor Network, was immensely helpful for my cars practice from getting 123 to 127. And so basically, Testing Solution made this free online cars course where they go over how you're supposed to time yourself, how to answer certain types of questions on the exam, and how to properly uh, review things like your mistakes. And the course is broken down nicely into 30 days. And the first week is basically this big overview of the cars section and what you can expect with like scoring and timing. And then the following two weeks, they start talking about different question types that you might come across in a section and they obviously give you helpful advice and tips along the way to answer those questions. And uh, I have to agree that most of the advices and strategies that they actually gave were pretty useful. And then the last week they actually go over something called answer pathologies, which is basically trying to understand what a correct answer might look like on cars. And they also go over how to properly review uh, cars passages, but I'm going to go over that in the next tip. And um, I'm not going to go over everything I learned in this course in this video just because they taught me a lot and I feel like they explain, they will explain it a lot better than I would in this video. Um, so I highly recommend you just go check them out. Alright, so the third tip I have is reviewing your course passage. The one thing that I do want to highlight from the course was actually how they taught their student to review cars passages. And this has by far been the most helpful advice they've given me from getting from a 123 to a 127. And the way it works is as followed. So after doing a cars passage, for example, I actually wouldn't go and look at the answers right away. I would actually set aside the cars passage and not come back to it for about four hours or so. And in those four hours, I would do things like maybe study for another section or go over my flashcards or watch some Khan Academy videos. When I return though, I actually don't even grade the passage. I would actually redo the passage, this time taking as much time as I needed, whether that's 30 minutes or 40 minutes um, to re-answer all the questions. And the point here is that you're trying to train yourself to think logically and correctly without having time be a limiting factor in stressing you out. 
And this turns out to be very helpful because now when you check for your answers, you know that you answered something wrong because your logic was wrong. And you can correct that obviously. You now know that you wouldn't be getting this question wrong because of things like running out of time or making silly mistakes. So it makes studying a lot more efficient. Okay, so the last tip I have is watching other people do cars. Um, it actually really helps to hear other people, you know, go through their logic, go through their reasoning when doing cars, especially when you watch um, someone who has done way better than I did, getting like 131 or 132. Um, a great video that I recommend is uh, this video of a guy talking through the, um, I think it's the first passage of the AMC Cars Q Pack One. So spoiler alert, he haven't gotten that, um, haven't gotten there yet. Uh, but the way he talks through his answer, and he also has a step-by-step -step algorithm that he uses, was very helpful uh, for me when it came time to practicing. All right, so that's gonna wrap up today's video. I sure hope these four tips are going to be useful to you. And they have, make sure to comment and like on the video. It really helps me know people are liking the content I'm pushing out. But uh, yeah, study hard and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.